Hey everyone, it's Megan here with Marigold Holistic Pet Care. Welcome to my bar, the Tipsy Hound Tavern. And in this video, we're gonna talk about dog house training. This video is gonna focus on four things that we're gonna cover to house train your dog. This works for puppies, and it also works for adult dogs. If you were told that an adult dog that you've brought into your home was house trained, that's great, but you still need to work on house training in the new environment. Now, if you've done all of these things that I'm about to cover, and you're still having issues, I would definitely do one of two things. Consult a trainer, personally and then also talk with your vet it might be a medical issue because there's no amount of training advice that can help something if it's in fact a medical issue so let's start out with mistakes if in fact your dog has a mistake it's gonna happen don't scold them for it okay there there's really no proven evidence that doing anything after the fact is going to actually teach your dog not to do that again. It actually will cause problems. They're going to be afraid of you. They're not going to want to be around you and even eliminate around you whenever you do want them to go to the bathroom. So be really mindful on the types of products that you use. Don't get caught up in the marketing that says pet odor eraser, pet odor remover. Um, a lot of times those, those products are just really well marketed and they don't really do a good job. So make sure that you're using an enzyme cleaner. Now I like to use Nature's Miracle. It's a really good enzyme cleaner because what it does is it will actually break down the enzymes in a pet's waste and they are not going to smell it, which is what's really important. So if they don't smell it, then they're not going to go back to that area to eliminate in the future. So make sure you clean it up properly. And if they have a mistake in the house, do you know what I tell people? Ask yourself what you did wrong that they made that mistake. The very first thing that you should really, really implement is a schedule, okay? Scheduled feeding times is so, so very important, as well as potty schedules. So I tell clients, get a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could just be a piece of scrap paper that everybody in the family writes down. Write down when you feed your dog water and food, and then also write down whenever they have eliminations, whether they pee or poop. Make sure you write that down. Keep track of it because what goes in on schedule will in fact come out on schedule and you will be able to see a pattern start to develop of when they're actually eliminating. So that will help you know when you need to actually take them out. So scheduled feeding times and scheduled potty breaks are huge. If you have a puppy, you should take that puppy out very very often and even in adult dogs too it doesn't have to be as often but just don't wait for them to tell you they have to go right away not all dogs are going to come natural with that so take your time and make sure that you are uh, taking them out often and giving them the opportunity to in fact go outside to use the bathroom Now I'm going to talk about management. Cannot stress management enough. Whenever you have a dog that doesn't understand the dynamics of what's expected of it yet, you need to make sure you manage your dog. So if you know that your dog isn't regularly going to the bathroom outside, isn't regularly telling you that they in fact need to go to the bathroom, you need to confine them or you need to make sure that you can see them in your sight. That means keeping them gated off into the same room that you're in. That means if you're not going to be in the home to supervise, you really should work on crate training. And you can also tether your dog to you. I've, I've had dogs that are um, new to my home, foster dogs, that I will actually tether them to me if I can't particularly keep an eye on them, but I don't want to put them in a crate while I'm at the house. So I will put a leash um, and I will attach it to myself and attach it to them and give them some freedom, but not so much freedom that they can go off and make mistakes if I may not be paying attention, I might be reading a book or something. So management is huge. If your dog has not gone to the bathroom outside, both pee and poop, and you physically watch them do that, they shouldn't have freedom of the home. If you take them outside to go to the bathroom and they don't go, bring them back in the house, give them a few minutes, and then you can then take them back outside to ensure that they, they will in fact go to the bathroom. Everything that I talk about in this video is super important, but this one is really, really important. 
timing of your reinforcement. A lot of times people make the mistake of bringing their dog into the home after going to the bathroom and they give them a treat then. Giving treats are great, but the timing of that treat isn't so great to really enforce that behavior of going to the bathroom outside. You got like a one or two second window where you need to really be on point with marking a behavior and enforcing the behavior. So that means you actually have to go outside with your dog while they're going to the bathroom. That means in the rain, that means in the snow, that means in the really, really hot heat. You gotta go out there with them. So the moment that they're going to the bathroom, you don't wanna interrupt them and eliminating, but while they're going to the bathroom, you need to mark that behavior, good boy, good girl, and then give them a treat right there immediately in the moment so that that behavior becomes rewarding and they want to go outside to go to the bathroom and that's when they begin to tell you that they need to go outside to go to the bathroom. I want to cover a couple little troubleshooting things before I end this video on top of what I already covered. I want you to be patient. Your dog doesn't know how to act in a human world. We need to teach that to them, regardless of how old they are. You may have a puppy, you may have an adult dog, and you may have an elderly dog that's kind of losing control over things. You need to be patient and you need to understand what's really going on, and maybe we need to be a little bit more clear with our communication with our dogs so that they can understand what's expected of them, and then we can set up an environment that controls them from making mistakes. And another thing too that I want to throw out there that isn't really talked about a lot with house training is that dogs have a lot more waste whenever you're feeding them a lower quality food. Spend a little bit more money. It doesn't have to be an enormous amount. Put a little bit more money into your dog's food budget. Feed them something of quality. They're going to have less waste because they're intaking less waste. And they're going to be healthier because of it. So think about that too as a reason why your dog might be having issues. Thanks for joining in on this video. I really hope this helped. If you have any other tips that have worked for you, definitely leave them down in the comments. I'm sure it would help a lot of other pet owners to see what other things that have worked for people. And subscribe to my channel. I'm having a lot of information being put out recently, and I'm really excited to share that with you guys. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss anything. And I will see you guys next video. big reason why nah, everything was good up until that point. Ugh. All right, you can do this. Hey, Ava, can you please stop dropping things? I can hear that on the camera. Thank you. Jeez. Cheers.